Rub up your engines! Well, I'm always laughing my rear end at these people that think they're making green stuff. Right? Here's a headline. Toyota's new engine can suck carbon out of the air. Toyota has a hydrogen burning GR Corolla concept car. And they say with the system they have, they can suck carbon out of the air. They tried it in an endurance race. It has two special filters and a recovery fluid to capture the carbon. Right? The filters have a ceramic catalyst coated with a CO2 absorbing material that Kawasaki developed. The filters capture CO2 from the outside air that gets pulled in every second. And it has to be heated up so it uses heat from the circulating engine oil of the engine to release the CO2 into this recovery fluid, right? Here's the rub. There's always a rub, right? I mean, a lot of the stuff, the green stuff, is such nonsense. Look at this. It can only capture 20 grams of carbon dioxide over 20 laps of the speedway. And one gallon of gasoline produces 8,870 grams of CO2. To the math, it is a fraction. And the hilarious thing is, these filters don't last long. Every time they fill the vehicle up, they got to replace the filter. So this isn't something we're going to see in our cars every day, you know, everyday drivers. You'd have a filter, you'd have to change every time you filled it up with gasoline. I mean, and the tiny amount that it actually absorbs. Volvo had a deal years ago where they were coating the radiators of the Volvo cars with a special catalyst that would take the carbon dioxide from cars in front of you. That failed miserably. I don't know. They made it for a year or something. I never heard of it again. So a lot of this stuff is just pure fantasy. That these people are coming up with these crazy ideas. That there's such a small amount of stuff for the money you spend. It's really not even worth doing. <laughs> Emmy Emma says, I got a head gasket leak in my Kia. Well, there's no surprise. 2009 Kia hatchback. My car is smoking gray smoke. There's a little bit of butter on my cap. Coolant's leaking through the head gasket. You were talking about trying to seal it with sealer. Uh, what do you think I should do? There are various sealers that are out there. They might last for a while. They may not last at all. What you'd have to do, because you already have water in the oil. From my experience, if you have water in the oil, it's too late. No sealer is going to fix anything because the oil is very slimy and you put the sealer in the coolant that oil's already impregnated it it's not going to work i've tried that over the years it doesn't work on the other hand let's say you got a car that's overheating or it's losing coolant but you don't yet have water in the oil or oil in the water you can try a sealer sometimes they work perfectly fine i find good auto parts stores bars leak is a really good company and they make one that's about 25 bucks and it says for all coolants and it works quite well for that type of thing. But like I say, if you have oil in the water, water in the oil, all bets are off. No sealer is going to work for any length of time because the oil slime, it's just the way that it goes. If you got a leak between the combustion chamber and the cooling, that can work because there's no oil involved. But once the head gasket blows where the oil parts of the gasket that seal the oil in and they blow, all bets are off. You're going to have to take it apart and replace the head gasket. That's just the way that it goes. And I've tried that sealers for years in those, and I've never found one that had oil in the water, water in the oil. They got fixed by a sealer because the oil's too slimy and it won't let anything set up. That's only if you're just getting combustion gases in the radiator then that can work. And I've seen sometimes they'll go for three, four years. Shane Lobby 03 says, I got a cylinder three misfire in my 2015 Audi S4. I replaced spark plugs, moved coil plugs, and it still misfires on number three. I even got rid of the cats and put straight pipes on it, and it still misfires. Now there's no sign of a head gasket leak. The only thing I think is a bad injector. I want to just replace them for that kind of money. Audis are very complex cars. They require... <laughs> some really high-tech analytical equipment if you're going to work on them and not gas. Now, you did the logical thing. You switched the coils and everything. So, you said you think it might be the fuel injectors. Buy a set of fuel injector O-rings, the O-rings that seal, right? And put the number three injector on one and one on three, and if it moves, you know it's a bad injector. Now, if you don't want to go that far, they take all that apart to swap the fuel injectors and buy the seals. Pay a guy like me, and we would hook up our fancy scan tool, and we can watch the data, and we can record it, and we can have the firing of each fuel injector graphed, and then 
when there is a misfire, if you see that the number three fuel injector is acting up, you know it's the number three fuel injector by looking at the data. Now, for a machine like that, you're talking five grand up, so you're not going to buy one yourself. You might say, okay, for that money, I'll just swap the fuel injectors, and if that's it, that's what the problem was. You can do that route too. Well, we mechanics have expensive equipment, and it does serve very good purposes, because rather than take it all apart, some of these are like 12 cylinders and getting to those fuel injectors it can cost like 15 hours of labor which could cost you a fortune thousands of dollars right that's why you got to have a machine like i have if you're going to work on those things seriously because you're not going to spend all that on a gas right just to swap the injector but yours it's not all that bad to swap injectors well i just read an article that said proof that wind and solar are not the energy that america really needs they broke down the expense of various types of energy production producing devices and of course the reason you see they use natural gas now is because natural gas is like the cheapest fastest way to get power going in an area these general electric gas turbines are pretty efficient right they're not super expensive you can build them pretty fast when i go travel i notice out west a lot of desert areas they're running them when they get more populated areas i'll throw a few of them in because they're relatively cheap to make and uh, they're efficient everybody knows they work right of course the nukes can last in last and last the nuke power plants they last and last and last the problem with them of course is they cost so much because of all the government regulations the government sticks its finger in the pie of everything and screws everything up it can take 10 15 years to get one set up and then try to build it and get it up and running and then the greenies for some reason don't like nukes which i don't understand at all well they warm the water that's <laughs> all so the the guppy fish mouth breeder in that area might not breed correctly right i mean come on now now in this article, the person gave wind and solar failing grades for various reasons. They gave them 56 and 58 percent. Now, the federal government says, oh yeah, you save money with wind and solar, la 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 la. And of course, it's all a facade because the federal estimates only look at the cost of new electricity generation, right? So they say, well, it costs so much money to build a nuke plant. It costs so much money to do this. And oh, we build this wind and solar ones. They don't they'll tell you the bottom line. For example, wind power, it often ends up costing more than 500% higher than what the federal estimate is. You always see these Fed stuff. Oh, you know, we're going to build this for $2 billion. And then by the time they're done, it's $20 billion, right? It's all government cost overruns. They lie about everything just to get you into it. Like they said to the people or my house is in Rhode Island. Oh, we're putting these wind turbines in. Oh, it's going to save everybody money. Gee, our electric rates went up like 40 something percent now that they're building these stupid things because they got to pay for them, right? It's too late then. They're already building them. Your rates are already jacked up, right? They just lie to you about the future. And of course, the big problem about wind and solar is they're not reliable sources of power. We use power all the time. We are a power hog society. Wind and solar just isn't going to cut the the mustard. We use a tremendous amount of electricity. If anybody ever went to figure it out, that it would make their head spin. I did a little research about these wind turbines they put in off Rhode Island. Then I saw the power that Rhode Island uses, and it is such a small percentage. To make one gigawatt of wind power in Rhode Island, it takes 412 utility scale side windmills, right? To make one. I believe they're putting up, I don't know, 60 or something out there. But the cost, they're going to break down anybody can tell you that these nuke plants have been going for 40 50 years and they're still working those things you probably won't get 10 12 before they break down and of course they never put that into the cost that's why when you say the cost can be 500 percent more than they say because these things are going to break down more than they should even if they lasted 15 years that's still four times the cost because the other things might last 40 50 years or more it just Make these fake figures out, try to suck you into it. Now when it's too late and your electric bills are going up the wazoo, you can't say, I didn't warn you because they're all liars in the government with figures that they know nothing about. And of course, the people they're building are going to go along with a big lie too. Hey, that's how they make a living selling you that crap. It's like the people that sell solar panels for people's houses. They promise you the moon and then the company goes bankrupt or it doesn't work. And then the company that built them says, oh, well, we don't warranty it. The guys that put them on did it wrong. Now you're going to have to pay la, 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 la. And they're only going to last so long. Then your roof's going to leak. They don't tell you any of the ramifications of this stuff. They just 
just put this fantasy, it's pure, it's clean. No, it isn't, and it doesn't work all that well either. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.